Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Talk Spicy. I'm Coach Gene Clemens. Thank you for joining me wherever you are joining me. Rate the show, comment, agree, disagree, but whatever you do, keep it spicy. Five-star ratings are appreciated. And if you are joining me on my YouTube channel, Coach Gene Clemens, like and subscribe or tell a friend. It's been an interesting week in sports and in culture. So, so far, Justin Fields is getting the usual black quarterback treatment. People are not allowing us to appreciate Julian Edelman. But first, Dante Wright, a 20-year-old black man, was killed in Brooklyn Center, Minnesota, after Officer Kim Potter shot him during a traffic stop Sunday. On Monday, the police chief, the police chief said that it was an accident and that the officer mistook her gun for a taser. Now, I've seen the body footage camera and or the body camera footage, and I think it's ridiculous that a 26-year veteran police officer seemed so panicked in a situation where a suspect never presented a physical threat. Why was there a need to pull the taser? There were three officers who were supposedly trained on how to handle these situations. I would like to believe that she had no intentions of murdering Wright. But in this climate, that's tough. Did she not understand the fear that the young man felt? At that moment, he probably thought there was a chance he would never go home, never see his family again. Guess what? He was right. Where was her compassion? Who was she protecting? Who was she serving? It leaves me with only one explanation. Either she was so afraid of a skinny, unarmed black man trying to flee that she lost her composure and shot him, or she is the most incompetent officer on the face of the earth both deserve to be fired. Both deserve jail time for this crime. But watch. Sit back and watch. Watch for the narrative shift. Listen to how he's portrayed by people who are attempting to justify his death. We'll learn every negative thing this young man has done while simultaneously hearing how great of an officer Potter has been during her years of service. Don't fall for the banana in the tailpipe. Justin Fields, in my opinion, one of the two best quarterbacks in this draft, one of the two quarterbacks who deserve to be taken in the first round, has had to deal with normal black quarterback stuff anonymous sources who claim that he's not a hard worker, anonymous sources who say he doesn't come off of his first read, anonymous sources who says he relies on his athleticism too much, how he doesn't think the game through. Do, do these sound familiar to you? Yeah, of course they do. They sound like everything that we've heard anyone ever say about black quarterbacks when they come out. When was the last time that you heard that a black quarterback just made the right decision with the ball all the time? By the way, let's just assume that Justin Fields is looking and getting the ball after his first read. Is it his fault that his first read is open? Because nobody seems to mind the fact that Mac Jones gets the ball out to the first read almost every single time. It's only an issue when Justin Fields does it. Athleticism is only an issue when it is possessed by a black quarterback. Because that then brings in the context of do, does he rely on his athleticism too much? But the athleticism of Trevor Lawrence, the athleticism of Zach Wilson, those are seen as a plus because now he's able to prolong the play so that he can continue to read downfield. He's allowed to escape and pick up those hidden yards 
that quarterbacks need to have success in the NFL. No one ever says, man, Trevor Lawrence relies on his arm strength too much. He tries to make throws he shouldn't because his arm is so strong, he just feels that he can make every throw. No, no, no. They say that his arm strength allows him to make every throw. Notice the shift in how the narrative is read when you're talking about Fields versus talking about Lawrence. I'm not even going to get into Zach Wilson because, in my opinion, it's utterly disrespectful to even think that Zach Wilson is a better quarterback than Justin Fields. It's ridiculous to think that Matt Jones is a better quarterback than Justin Fields. I'll just keep it at the two. Trevor Lawrence makes more stupid throws than Justin Fields does. If you don't believe me, go look at the film. Trevor Lawrence is everything that they say Justin Fields is. He's everything that they say Justin Fields is. What's the difference? He won a national, he won a national title. Oh, well, he's playing for, for a coach that everybody has respect for and loves. Really? That's it? Because he's playing for Clemson? Nobody has love and respect for Ohio State? Oh, well, Ohio State's quarterbacks haven't had as much success in the NFL. And when was the last Alabama quarterback that was good in the NFL? When was the last BYU quarterback that was good in the NFL? Steve Young? I mean, come on. And if we're talking about Clemson quarterbacks who have been good in the NFL, you only have one. You only have one. So what is it about Justin Fields that's making him precipitously drop? Well, it happens every single year. Every single year, a highly touted black quarterback drops in the draft because of quote-unquote character issues or evaluations that say they have an op a, 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 a difficulty reading defenses. Every year, there's a white quarterback that shoots up the, up the board because they say that he's smart. Never mind that Matt Jones couldn't beat out two quarterbacks that came before him. Never mind that he was in a quarterback competition with a guy who is going to light up Alabama next year. Never mind that Zach Wilson got hurt and his team got better last year. It was only when they were able to put together this makeshift schedule versus a bunch of sorry-ass competition that Zach Wilson had a great season. And in the one game that they lost, he was utterly ordinary. Name the game that Ohio State lost where you said it was Justin Fields' fault. I'll call you a liar. We know what it is. We've always known what it is. And thank you to a lot of our, our white friends who have now began to say this aloud. But until we just call it, call a spade a spade, we call it for what it is, it will continue to happen. Finally, Julian Edelman is calling it a career, or at least I believe that he's calling it a career. And I want to say congratulations, Julian Edelman. You had a great career. I want to say how clutch you are as a receiver. I want to tell you that you made some fantastic catches for the, the, the Patriots over the years. It's been great watching you operate in a system that was designed for you to have success because you could have easily ended up in situations that did not favor what you did best. I'd love to say all of that. I'd love to dwell on that. But people keep trying to make this guy a Hall of Famer, and I'm going, what in the hell are you talking about? Julian Edelman is many things, but a Hall of Famer is not one of them. There is no Hall of Fame just because you had success in the postseason. By the way, any wide receiver who was in the postseason as much as Julian Edelman 
should have a lot of statistics to show for it. But if Reggie Wayne's not in the Hall of Fame, why would Julian Edelman go into the Hall of Fame? And we can do that. We can go down the list of wide receivers who made Julian Edelman look like what he really was, which is a possession receiver put into an offense built for possession receivers who in the regular season never put up any numbers that made anybody fear him as a receiver. See, the problem is, is when people start talking about Julian Edelman as a Hall of Famer, they eliminate the opportunity for us to praise him for what he did that was great. And they make us point out his shortcomings. They make us point out the things that were not great about him. They make us point out the things or the reasons why he doesn't come to the level of other receivers who are still not in the Hall of Fame. If they would just take a step back and let us talk about the greatness of Julian Edelman in, in the context that it should be spoken about, we wouldn't have to dog the thought process of this man being a Hall of Famer when there's nothing Hall of Fame about his career. Again, I applaud you, Julian Edelman. You've had a fantastic career. You, my friend, are not a Hall of Famer. And you know what? I think Julian Edelman knows it. So for all of you people out there touting Julian Edelman should be a Hall of Famer, please go somewhere else with that. Allow us to appreciate that man for what he did. Don't make us dwell on all of the things that he did not do. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me on Talk Spicy. I'm Coach Gene Clemens. Rate the show, comment, agree, disagree, but whatever you do, keep it spicy. Join me every Tuesday and Thursday, and I'll talk to you again in a couple of days. Don't rob nobody. Don't let nobody rob you. Peace.